Learning Logarithmic Equations Review. I'm your host, Mr. Pot. We have a special guest today, Natural Logarithms. Natural Logarithms, we'll see him in the second example. The first example we're going to do today is to solve the equation around two four decimal places. That comes to play at the end. We have the log of x is equal to the log of 2x squared minus 2. Notice the minus 2, there's no parentheses around the minus 2 and the 2x squared. So the logarithm's only being applied to the 2x squared. At this point, I'm going to use three properties to write my next equation, or the next line of my work, if you will. I'm going to use the subtraction property of equality to subtract the log of x from both sides. Even though I put the log of x underneath the log of 2x squared, don't worry about it. I know they're not like terms. I'm also going to add 2 to both sides. Now, by using the addition and subtraction properties of equality, I've eliminated the log logarithm on the left-hand side. I've eliminated the constant on the right-hand side. I have the logarithms grouped together on one side. On the left-hand side would be 2. But I'm going to write that on the right-hand side of the equal sign. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to write down these two logarithms. The logarithm of 2x squared minus the logarithm of x. From here on out, I'm going to just try to say log instead of logarithm. Watching this video, hopefully you recognize that when we're subtracting two logarithms or logs, we can use the quotient property. What that quotient property allows us to do is to write this, these two logs as one log, and we will divide what we're taking the logarithm of. So in the numerator is 2x squared, and in the denominator is the x. Bring the two along. Now from, to form the next line of work, what I'm going to do is simplify this fraction. 2x squared divided by x. That will leave 2x. You could think of it as having 2x's up here and 1x down here. They divide out. Mm. From here, Hopefully you recognize this is a log base 10. This is a common log, log base 10. So we can rewrite this logarithmic equation as an exponential equation. On the right-hand side, since this is a log base 10, the base will be 10, the exponent is 2, and we leave the 2x on the left-hand side. So converting the logarithm equation into an exponential equation gives us 2x is equal to 10 squared. Here we're going to simplify the 10 squared. 10 times 10 is 100. Next we divide both sides by 2 using the division property of equality. 2 is on the left cancel, giving us x is equal to 50. The second example involves natural logs. And we're asked to solve and round to four decimal places. In the last example, we didn't have to round to four decimal places. It came out to be a whole number. You have to remember the properties of logs also apply to natural logs. This problem gives us the natural log of x plus the natural log of the quantity x plus 1 is equal to 5. Notice I said the words the quantity. That indicates a set of parentheses. This is grouped together. We're taking the natural log of x the sum of x plus 1, so that's why it's included in parentheses. When we see an addition sign between two natural logs, we know it's going to be written as a product of the two logs. Uh, that means we're going to take x and multiply it by x plus 1. And we'll bring down the rest of the equation. At this point, we're going to simplify. Well, let's go actually go over to here. Uh, what we just did there was use the product rule. 
or the product property of logarithms, or in this case, natural logs. And to go from the first line to the second line, now from here, we're just going to simplify, distribute this x, so that will give us x squared, and plus x, should include that in parentheses, being equal to 5. So all we did from here to here was simplify the equation. Simplify the equation. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to write it in exponential form. Remember, this is uh, the number e. So this would be sort of like a base e over here. So we're going to write this as e to the fifth. And on this side, that's just going to leave us with the x squared plus x. And my x got a little funny there. So from this line to this line, we just wrote it in exponential form. understand this is short for exponential. From here we're going to move the e to the fifth. Remember e is a number. We'll just work with it as if it was a number pi. Move it over to the left by subtracting it from both sides. Don't make the mistake a lot of kids make here. They get stuck. When this cancels, remember they're additive inverses, so that gives us zero. And on the left hand side we have the quadratic equation x squared plus x minus e to the fifth. From this line down to here, all we did was the, or all we used was the subtraction property of equality. Kid asked me in class the other day when we were working on this problem, or maybe it was today, time of this video, I'm not real sure how long ago it was. But anyway, how do we solve that? I'm like, it's a quadratic. The student looked at me like, what's a quadratic? We spent plenty of time on quadratics. And at this point, we're going to use the quadratic formula, which, remember, is this x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And that's all divided by 2a. So we're going to use this being a, this coefficient is b, this is the constant c, so we're going to use the quadratic formula here. Substitute these values in, so x is equal to the opposite of b, b in this case is 1, so the opposite of b or the opposite of 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared is 1, so 1 squared minus 4 times 1, the coefficient on the square term, is 1, so times 1, and in here, this will be the opposite of e to the fifth. So we've got to take the square root of all of that, and then we need to divide it by 2 times 1. At this point, I just use a calculator, a scientific or graphing calculator, either way. And what I do is I calculate what's underneath the radical, so I can take the square root of it. When I plug this into the calculator, this would be 4 times 1 times negative e to the fifth, and that gives a result of, well, actually it looks like I used the square root too. I put it all in at the same time, use the square root, and what's underneath the radical, that gives us 5.5 278 divided by 2. I finished these calculations to get x being equal to 2.2639 or x being equal to negative 3.2639. Now what's wrong with this one is that we cannot be working with a negative log. So that's no good. We can scratch it out. So our solution here is x is equal to 2.2639.